kit and stick it on the paper, right? <laughs> this is a eat paste. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to say I did or I didn't. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. No, anymore. no, no, okay. no, no, no. Are you sure? I don't. Hey, you leave me alone. Uh oh, it's not going to work. Do what? Hmm, that's Say weird. What? Anyway, the guy that's right there, steamcommunity.com forward slash group forward slash horseplay hashtag members. You don't need hashtag members. That's just the members section. <sighs> Jeez. <laughs> so you, guys are, you guys are, hey, call, sir. Right, do it now. Do it, hey. Sir. Mm. Sir. Ah. Sir. We Jeez. need to please stay calm. <laughs> Soldiers just messed you up. He did, dude. I'm he good just, at that. I'm a he just up. won't. He won't leave me alone. I mean, it's just all the time. God, I'm glad you're leaving. <laughs> that was a low blow. I'm sorry. I just made this bitch cry. <laughs> no, right. no puedo creer. John yeah. Travolta se va. No, no te vayas, por favor. Te quiero tanto. No. That's a Spanish what? soap opera, by the way. No, 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 you, uh, you Mexican. Your, oh. your face is Mexican. Oh. <laughs> Everybody, that's an inside joke, okay? Because he's not Mexican, he's Puerto Rican. He's Puerto so Rican. Every time we call him Mexican, he gets really, really mad. Well, he didn't just, I think he's had a few beers, so it's kind of wearing off by now. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we're going. As, no, hey, we need to pay attention. Serious face. Hey, 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 <laughs> you guys. Listen to me. I tell, I put it in. I tell you what to do. Okay? <laughs> 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 you, you listen to me. I, I tell you, you look at my little friend. Okay? Okay, man. Let's go. Future updates will be put out uh, for everybody. If our schedule changes, <laughs> and then we'll, <laughs> if we're playing one of those games, normally, more than likely, one of us is recording. So, um, if you want to be on a recording, just pipe up. If you do have um, voice chat, I do have a TeamSpeak. Um, I don't like to use Skype very often, but TeamSpeak is definitely, we'll get that out to you um, here soon as well, once we decide, uh, once I actually decide if I want to let it out in the open. But <clears throat> there are several things that we can use, uh, public ventrilos and public team speaks that there are available that I have the information for that if we do want to play together in the future. So. <laughs> I'm watching Soldier just, like, orgasm as he's I picking in his ear. He's no, like, okay, seriously. He's hey, just like, news update. Uh, news update. Every three months, i got to uh, clean out my ear and hunk out a piece of wax that big. Okay, no, Sucks. no, no. Feature, feature it. Not your wax update. I'm, ne 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 next time I clean it out, I'll be sure to save it and show you guys. It's gonna be cool. Hey, it you need to stop like right now. Stop right now. So just growing Yogi. some plantains in his ears. Yogi, what's our <laughs> our feature for the show? Let's bring it out. Oh wow, man! Our yeah. our feature for this show, this our big discussion is going to be the title of it is the rise of death in the video game industry, and it's not what you think. It's not about death portrayed in video games. It's about uh the the state of affairs, the state of the the union, <laughs> but for video games. Uh, what what triggered this? Uh, I don't know if you guys have noticed the general uh, malcontent or dissatisfaction uh, amongst gamers, but I listened to one podcast in particular, which is episode uh, 792, I believe, of the Dead Pixel podcast, Dead Pixel yeah. Live, with Derek yeah, Hopkins, and uh, and him and a bunch of other people seem to resound the same thing. Nice hat. <laughs> Soldier has hat. Soldier has ADD. <laughs> he has to try out hats while we're doing it through the spiel. <laughs> so you know, uh, a lot of people are just kind of tired how how um, you know th these big companies, especially the big publishers and AAA developers, 
are kind of, uh, you know, with one hand they're punching us in the gut and the other hand they're giving us the reach around, like we mentioned earlier. So, you know, it, it, it is... Hey, is Yogi's there... all about getting a reach around, isn't he? Well, I mean, uh, you know, a reach around, I mean, who's going to say no to that? I mean, just saying. But... <laughs> Do you say My no, wife's Yogi? behind me. I, something's wrong from the get-go. Do you say no, Yogi? <laughs> yes or no question, sir. <laughs> no, that, that's entrapment. That's, just, that's leading you up to something else. <laughs> Doesn't it always? <laughs> All right, keep going, man. No, that does remind me of a Chris Rock uh, little, this little skit he used to always say during stand-up. He'd be like, what was it, uh... If you, if you if you, he's talking about being in jail, thing. If you if you suck a dick, you go and pretend it's a banana. But if you eat the ass, you eat the ass. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is why you don't want to go to jail. Where, I don't know. Where is this coming from? <laughs> We're on freaking. We're talking about reach around. Eyes of death, man. You're talking about reach arounds and shit. What's going on, Yogi? <laughs> this also to... has necrophilia involved. Do we have yeah. <laughs> We have to have a conversation. Do we have to talk, Yogi? No corpses. We gotta tell them about the birds and the bees after they die. The so one of these days I have to remind me. To... <laughs> Dead bees and birds, yeah. One of these days remind me to tell you the story about a dead body. There's a necrophiliac. I don't want to hear about Re- it. A true story. eating ass. Why would we want to hear about that shit? I mean, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will laugh, trust me. It's funny stuff. Uh, anyway. This better not be a stiffy joke. No, I'm not. <laughs> wow. That's a good punchline, too, though. No, this is a true story. But anyway, moving on. Seriously. Right, move on, move on. Se- serious face. Okay. So, serious face. Uh, you know, our, it really makes you good. Let's, let's put our thinking caps on and, th- and, and be a little introspective, so to speak. And think about, you know, is, is the video game industry, and he put on a serious hat, that's good, soldier. Uh, you know, is the, is the video game industry really on a downward spiral? You know, are all the video game developers and publishers dicks? You no. know, will every company eventually fail? This is a very powerful statement that Derek Hopkins on, on Dead Pixel Live said. He said that every comp- video game company eventually will fail. Um, and, and, and I can see the, that due to arrogance, because Nintendo is kind of going down a path, um, its software is pretty much dead, Sony has been teetering on bankruptcy as far as their, uh, gaming division has gone, uh, they've been teetering on bankruptcy, and they've been trying to hide that constantly, but they've, they have been struggling, uh, on the movie side, they haven't been doing too bad, but, um, there's a lot of interesting notes here. And and I also think about what was different back in the days of like the Pong, the Atari 2600, the NES, which a lot of people consider the golden age before the, the crash of the video game industry in 1983, mm-hmm. right? So a lot of points to discuss here. Uh, let's, uh, let's 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 start it off. Uh, Obi Soldier, you got anything to start off with? I know we have some talking points here we could discuss. Yeah, sure. I just don't. I'm not doing the first two. How's that? <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll do the first. Where, I'll I'll do number three. I'll do the first two because those those hit home I for feel, me. I feel be I feel fine being number third. You feel fine being the third in our party? That's fine. <laughs> He's in the way back. He doesn't get a reach around. Nope. <laughs> He's fine. the one giving the reach around <laughs> That's fine. to the dead wow. to the dead birds and bees. <laughs> that means nobody's behind me. So go ahead. Well. Kids, don't share cookies with a, with a bunch Soldier. of guys. Do not share cookies with a bunch of guys. That's all I'm telling you. That's the best advice you ever get. Yeah, don't drop the soap in the shower either, but damn. <laughs> so anyway, so what, what are the things so I, thing I think is interesting? Well, this, is the, this is the goal in the way. This is the fair one, Soldier. We have to have extra horseplay in here. Oh yeah, I don't care if we don't we don't get through all our segments. I'm just having fun. But so yeah, so uh, stick, sticking uh, to the discussion here, the rise of death in the video game industry. You know, or is it really glee, all doom and gloom? You know, is, is it really going downhill? Well, one of the things I, f- I think that's a positive thing in the industry is the fact that social media has really increased the accountability of companies in general. There's a lot more transparency. Like, before, it used to be much easier to, swi- to sweep things under the rug or hire a PR person to do damage control 
But nowadays, if you know, if you have someone that works for your company says something really stupid on Twitter and it goes viral, it's done. It's already in the ether, the internet. Nothing's getting rid of it. It's already spreading out, and that's it. You know, you can do all the damage control you want, but that that image is ingrained in people's brains. So I think social media is is a thing that it definitely favors more the consumer. I think we have more rights, more power than we ever have, mm-hmm. because we could be a you know. We could be a lot louder than we ever could. I mean, one person gets ten people to tweet something, and then you know, or, or post something on Facebook, and then those ten people get something, get get uh, ten people to do the same thing, and so on and so forth. Next thing you go from ten people to a hundred to a thousand to ten thousand. I mean, it, it becomes exponential, and that's the the whole nature of viral marketing. Right. So well, I think something. Sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, something that I was going to say, bring up on that. And it's, I'm not, I'm gonna I'm actually going right to mine, um, um, especially with what you're talking about your social medias, and it's so so much easier for people to get on their social media with all you need is this right here. Okay, um, I'm actually on my apps on my phone. I have a uh, an Evo um, 4G. Uh, it was new a year and a half, two years ago. Um, and I have all my, all my little apps from the clan that I'm in. I have an app for that. Okay. When they say there's an app for that, there's an app for it. I'm telling you. Um, but with all that being said, with being able to be on your phone and your tablet and having Android systems and, uh, even with the, the, uh, the iPhone systems for a game developer to, to break in, he doesn't hardly need any money anymore. Because I can tell you right now, this game right here, okay, it is a game and it's called Clash of Clans. Okay, you go into this game and all you do is you level your your town, you do the little things like this, and it took this guy nothing to make this. So what happens when he wants to grow a little bit? And it's just it's it's the amount. Basically, what I'm saying, trying to say, is the amount of um, of capital or money that you that you would have to have in the past to start one of the games because of the lack of technology. Now the technology has far preceded all these games and all you need is a couple pennies on the dollar to make these games. I mean, I mean, are you guys seeing that? It, I mean, I know soldier, you said you have a, do you have a, got the LG too. Okay. So, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you play your, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to say it. Um, not a lot of guys play it, but, I play Candy Crush too. It's on my phone. Oh no, you gotta play Marvel Puzzle okay. Quest. Marvel I mean, Puzzle Quest, guys. Okay, okay, Marvel. okay. But good. what I'm trying to get at though is it's so easy. I mean, no matter what system you got, whether you got a Windows system, an uh, an iPhone system, and you know Apple based, um, or uh, an Android, you can get all these games for for half ninety percent of them are free. Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I also have to say that, uh, like, the one that I use, um, there's a game I've been playing. I, I got this game. Uh, C-Nanners and Sark played it. A lot of people know them. Uh, <laughs> it's called... Hang on. I don't exactly remember the name. Uh, the Crying... Super, oh, Super Stickman Golf 2. Yes, oh. that's awesome. Yeah, that That is an awesome game. And, I mean, these guys, they were playing it on an airplane to their a video game conference or whatever, and they were Bluetoothing it. Played against each other. It was a blast. Uh, very funny, too. Uh, but games like that where, you know, it's free, but there's also microtransactions in it. So this person is making some money off of it. Um, so, I mean, you know, like, like, you know, like you said, Obi, these, th- th- these games that you – you can make on these Mm -hmm. they're really easy uh it doesn't take nearly the uh the type of experience you need to actually make you know like battlefield or games like that um they're really easy to make they can be really fun right and you put microtransactions in for the people who really like and playing it and really want more things for it or just want it quicker um you can make you can make some more of a living off of it i mean it's 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 really nice uh you can do you can do anything on a phone almost nowadays. Um, I have pocket manga here, so I can read my manga. Hell um, yeah! You could get Crunchyroll on this, and you could 
yeah well it, pocket manga gives you several different manga websites that and it just gives you lists i mean it re- reads off them uh you can get crunchyroll on it you can watch your animes uh through right. crunchyroll on these um i mean there's just a lot of things like here i've got of course i got my battle.net uh mobile authenticator but there's also arts and crafts coupons on right here you got a coupon app right here you got joanne it's a local store so for Wichita. all your app needs yeah for <laughs> all your well i mean you you can you literally oh and this is this is by far my son's my son's favorite is little little fireworks that you can just touch and they go right. off well uh, you guys you know can do anything with them right and you guys know that like for christmas my two and a half year old got a kindle um nice which he knows how to use it better than i do um but with and i'm gonna i'm gonna not take something but with what some behemoth said in chat it's it's not so much that the graphics are amazing and everything is just awesome it's all of the one word just convenience when you are sitting um <sighs> In a gas station waiting on your line, you can pop out your phone and just bam, 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 do one like one or two hits and then go. That doesn't sound right, does it? But you know <laughs> what I mean? I was thinking about the golf game. But, you know, there's little things that you can do. You can just be playing all day long. My wife has a game on her iPad. And it's um, it's a uh, – it's, it's one of the stories. You know, it's not the bakery story. It's not the – it's like a city story or something like that, and she's she's been playing it forever. Her city is massive. I said, like, don't you ever get bored? She goes, eh, it's just a way to pass time. I believe that's called Yeovil. Yeovil? It's like where you I have a whole bunch of – it's like a city. I, I, I don't know exactly what it is. They've had a few of them, yeah. Mm. They've, got, they've got a Simpsons version of that too where you build up the town of the Simpsons. <laughs> Half hour later <laughs> – <laughs> I, mean, oh, I was just reading what he was saying too. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I, was, I, was like, I, just, I thought I said something to him a half hour later. I'm like, no, I didn't. Your comment was 12:20, man. Don't yell at me. No, no, he's talking about yeah. <laughs> okay. Really? Yeah. Anyway, lol. And you guys say I'm in a dark place. They talk about yeah. epic, epic dumps. Indie games. You like indie to games. Come to my indie games are on a rise, and um, a lot of gamers are voting. Um, with their wallets um basically they're saying hey we want these games you guys are actually doing something good that we actually like um but at the same time are we tired of what they're going to be doing here in the future or now as in with the all the microtransactions and all the you know hey if you want to play this game you have to buy it you have to pay this the ones that I really enjoy are like, you know, the Super Stick Man Golf 2. It is free, <laughs> and you do get advertisements every now and then, but they're easy to slough off. Um, but they do put in microtransactions for those who want to leap ahead or just don't like the advertisements. I mean, they make the option available, but they don't penalize you for not getting that option. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's those kinds of microtransactions I love. I absolutely adore those kinds of microtransactions. That being said, there are games out there that me and quite a few friends have tried playing. I mean, we're, we get gung-ho into this, like Stronghold Crusaders Online. Uh, you know, it's kind of like Clash of Clans and whatnot. That was a big deal for an older clan of mine, and we really got into it until we found out that the reason why we were getting our butts handed to us was because you couldn't really do anything unless you did do the microtransactions. Uh, everybody had uber boosted armies and uber boosted resources and everything because they did the micro transactions and when you put that kind of a strain upon the players who don't want to spend the money you're going to lose players and possibly future income uh from the players that would stick with it right well what do you think about yogi look at your comments too well with micro transactions the the way it usually works is you know, like the twenty percent of people that actually pay for the game make it possible for the eighty percent to be cheap bastards and play for free. You know, so it, it, it's still a viable model. It's I think it's always gonna be a viable model, but I think with the indie games, they're usually a lot more honest. 
typically they, they try to be more honest about it and they don't make it so that if you don't pay you have a shitty experience they make it so that you have a great experience if you if you don't play but if you want to jump ahead you know if you don't pay you know you still have a great experience but if you want to jump ahead and fast track yourself then you can pay to enhance the experience you know it's not it's not a forced thing <clears throat> whereas you know lately you know the last you know not even lately just for the past five years or so really we've seen a lot more especially in the console market where uh there'll be a, a unfinished release you know like gta 5 is, it comes to mind uh battlefield 3 and 4 were both terrible when they were first released tons of glitches and bugs that everybody's complaining about yep they released these incomplete games and then they have the audacity to say hey new dlc coming in a couple of weeks what the fuck the game just came out <laughs> new patch yeah. coming out you know in a couple of weeks and it's like it's like they, they they hand us this 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 crap and they and we pay top dollar for it not like they're giving it to us for free and then on top of that they want us to pay more after that even though we got a shit product to begin with you know like if you look, think about this and I, this is where what, what Derek was I don't know if you guys got to listen to the whole episode of uh, Dead Pixel Live that was episode uh, 792 but as a reference point you guys check it out uh, anyone who's listening or watching us, um, you know, it's just one of the points he made was that if you compare, if you use this as a, a metaphor, like comparing this to anything else in the world, right? Imagine like if you went to, I don't know, a doctor's office, right? And you get, you get some kind of surgical procedure done. <laughs> let's say you, you get a heart transplant, right? Or let's say something less less major, like a, a kidney transplant, but it's still pretty serious. You, you get one of your kidney a replaced. A transplant. A pole transplant, whatever. You get something transplanted, and then they they get the they get the procedure started. You know, they open you up. They 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 pull the bad crap out, and then they say, "Okay, great. Have you enjoyed yourself so far? Here's the DLC. <laughs> you gotta pay me extra before I finish the rest of the procedure." What the fuck? But I already paid. I already, you know, ha gave you my insurance information. This, this is pretty much paid. It's a done deal. Nope. You got to get the, the DLC. You, you want that extra organ? Yeah, DLC. <laughs> yeah. See, and to me, you know, we talk about the, the battlefield. You know, yeah, battlefields were very glitchy at the first. Um, and I find that, I mean, a lot of games are going to have that from the get-go. And they do fix them. Um, but, you know you know we're going to talk about early and new releases you know and whether or not they're worth it uh the one that comes to mind is minecraft you know it was considered alpha for the longest time and beta for the longest time before they finally released it i mean you had people pumping out minecraft videos you know talking about it playing it you had servers up i mean the game was practically re practically released by the time they released it um you know that kind of thing i thought was fine because you know it was it wasn't, you know, it didn't have all the added content, but they said we're adding more. And, you know, it that when they purchase the game early like that, it kind of gives them a nice boost, you know, to for their own business, you know. I mean, they can kind of go, oh, hey, look at this income. We can now spend more time and put more stuff into Minecraft with it. Um, but when you pre-release other games, you know, that are not ready to be released, um will kind of hurt them especially when they make you pay for it and it turns out to be a you know pile of crap um <laughs> a game that comes to mind is uh seven days to die if you guys know that one um i kickstarted it i got a copy of it and the first time i played it i thought it sucked balls um they've added a bunch since then i haven't hopped on it and played it i've been doing other things but you know it it kind of it, it 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 really made me not like the game the first time I tried it. And so to me, if you're going to do an early release or something, you need to have it finished to the point where you can play it, and then add more content later if you want. Um, but it, it needs to have like I mean, you couldn't do anything before. I mean, when it first came out as you know beta, and it kind of sucked, but. You know they're they're adding more stuff and it looks like it's getting better and better. Sweet. Well, um, I did get an, a, a question from from one of the other hosts. Um, if you guys do 
would like to come on. And um, I, I just, I actually just got to do some call-ins. You guys still want to do that? Don't see why not. Yogi? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so I think, we I think are... after we, we take care of the main uh, major points, I think there's still a lot of other stuff that we should discuss to kind of paint the big picture here. Okay, go ahead then. Finish the rest of the notes. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the, the other thing I think that the, all that what we just discussed kind of brings to light is, um, you know, is it really worth getting early or new releases? Now, there's a, there's a difference between the two. Like, I personally love early access because it develops the expectation that, hey, this may not be a complete product. It may be more of a tech demo, you know, but if you see the potential here, vote with your wallet. And that's cool. I'm willing to take a risk with something that I really think is a cool concept, especially if the company has a good track record or, or, or they or they show enough proof to say, hey, you know, we're going to do this. Cool. But what I don't stand for is getting a new release, paying full price, and then getting an uh, incomplete product. I, I just think that I just can't do it anymore. And it's just driving me nuts. And, and um, I think what they should do in that case is maybe... Uh, change the pricing system or something. I don't know, but I think that eventually there's going to be a tipping point where gamers are going to finally say, hey, you know, fuck that. I'm not going to get a new release. I'll wait until the price drops, and then we'll see the used game market go up again. But I think the other thing too is like I don't I don't know about you guys, but I noticed I have not been pre-ordering as much, if at all, recently. The past couple of years, I, I just yeah, I haven't pre-ordered anything last three years actually. Yeah, for me, it's just been like the past couple of years. I just, like, I tell you, every time I go to GameStop to just fart, they always try to sell you. I know they have to tell, they have to make the sales pitch, but it's like, I'll buy a stick of chewing gum in, in GameStop. You know, like, it's a $5 purchase. You want to put a warranty on it? <laughs> no. <laughs> you, do you want to pre-order anything? We got a bunch of good games coming up. And, like, and I'm looking at the wall of games that are coming up. I'm like, I don't give a shit about any of those games. Like, and then there's some good stuff coming up now. Exactly. <laughs> Like, Titanfall, I'm a little curious. Destiny, I'm a little curious. But it's not like, oh my god, if I don't get that game when it comes out, I will be such a loser. I don't feel that, like, at all anymore. Maybe it's old age, or maybe I, I really... I don't think it's old age. I think it's really... The, the quality of games has really gone down. And the the feeling of... That feeling of getting your money's worth is becoming less and less so. Unless you're going through a Steam sale, or Humble Bundle, or good old games or cheap shark or you like support an indie project you really believe in and you watch it grow like you get you join something on, on the on the ground level um i feel that's the difference but um you know, there's a few more points and then we'll i guess we can set up for some uh call-ins oh I, no, we're gonna keep doing this we'll do that uh we'll do that here soon um, especially like around the free balling. So we have Collins around the free balling section. We'll rock that out. Um, <laughs> so you guys stay tuned. We are going to put that up. I'll be putting the team speak information right on horse, right underneath the horse play. When that does come up, the first one to get on team speak will be the first one. Um, will be one of the first ones and maybe the man of the hour to, uh, do some free balling with the, uh, with horse play here. So stay tuned for that. Um, another, uh, what else we got here going? Hmm, regulations could make or break the industry as cost could be passed on to consumers. Um, I hope he's so lost. I am. <laughs> I am. He just read uh, that. What I, what, what, I, what I wrote that there, what, I, what I'm thinking. The funny thing is, the funny thing is, is he did that on purpose. Okay. <laughs> Because he knows, he knows for a fact that I look for whatever color he is in our in our our show notes here. If he's orange, I'm looking for the orange mark. And wherever that orange mark is, if he hasn't started by now, that's where I start. And he did that on purpose. He didn't move his orange mark. Wow. Thanks, Yogi. Set me up for failure again. No, uh, well, <laughs> what, what I'm saying he's with like, that point like, there. No, nope, don't worry about it. <laughs> Go, dude. <laughs> You know, the thing about it, you know how some people feel like there should be small government and some people think there should be a bigger government. Like, sometimes I wonder if it'd be different if the industry, the gaming industry was regulated better. 
but I kind of feel like they shouldn't be. I think, I think we're in a position now as consumers to really stick it to the developer. There's there's enough content out there on all platforms to really be able to have the power of choice and say, you know what, I'm tired of your shit. You know, oh, I love Battlefield series, but I hate EA, and I know what kind of stuff they do. Fuck you, I'm not going to get this game. I'll get something I can... There's, like, tons of other shooters that are comparable, let's be honest. I mean, Battlefield's awesome, but, you know, go with Company of Heroes, Arma, or something, and you won't really be missing out too much. And it sucks, though, because, you know, ultimately, we do go where our friends are at, but if everybody just rallies together and says, hey, fuck, fuck them, let's get together and just play a different game together, cool. You know, I think we have that power to, to really change the industry. Um, you know, another thing I was kind of curious to is who really is in a position to create their own console. Maybe we might need another console in the market besides the Steam Machine. Cause I, I don't, I really don't consider think that we console. need anything else. I think everything right now is going. And then we'll get on. To, we're going to discuss this. But I want to put my two cents in first. Weird, we don't need another console. I'm uh-huh. sorry to say this. But if somebody comes out with a console right now, they are going to fail miserably. They could yeah. be one of the best consoles in the world, but they will fail miserably because there's there's too much out right now. There's the Xbox One. Um, there's the PS4. There's the, and believe it or not, there's still the Wii. There's um, going to be coming the Steam. I mean, there's 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 just too many right now. Don't forget we the Neo Geo X. Uh, yeah, well, that too, but we can't. We can't, there can't be another one right now. There, it's maybe in the future, if you know, especially like Apple. I think Apple would be a good one to start one. Um, Activision or EA, fuck them. But that's all. I don't, you know, I, you know, maybe Sega, but Sega's just they're gone. I mean, they're not gone, but I wouldn't buy one. Apple, I would buy a console from Apple if it's the right whatever, you know. But that's so close to Xbox. I mean, X, you know, you get Microsoft and I don't know. But I mean, go ahead. You guys are laughing at me right now, so go ahead and do it yourself. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just no, saying competition. Go, yes, Obi's gone. Competition's always a good thing, but I think there's enough competition at this point that we don't need any new consoles or anything. Well, well, it, it just we can't. I won't. I won't beat that dead horse. But I, I, I think there's still opportunity to. I mean, look at Nintendo. Nintendo doesn't compete with the Sony or Xbox products. You know, they they really don't. They they do their own thing. They've carved off their own niche. You could own a, a you know a Nintendo console and and still own one of the other ones and be part of the fanboy wars. Mean- we own a like my family right now. We own a With 3DS. Xbox. We own a Wii. We own a Wii and an Xbox. We have the Wii for my kid, you know, with all the controllers and plus the Wii Fit that we use on it. And the Xbox plays all my fucking shoot 'em up. Cam, you're not allowed to play these video games. Games. Yep. That's how it is. Yep. True. So I mean, it's it's. Um, you know, and then coming down to it where, you know, um, comparing, okay, um, you ask yourself the question. Um, I don't know if you guys, I mean, maybe you guys haven't just said pondered and sat that and asked yourself this question. But if you do, or if anybody does, where where does the, 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 the industry of video gaming and, and consoles and all this other stuff, where does it peak and where does it really, or you know, or fall off? I mean, you guys? I think it, it kind of peaked in maybe, I would say around 2000, early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Like the Dreamcast, I think, was the last console that really innovated as far as the hardware goes. And they've been borrowing pages from the Dreamcast since then. No, Sony won't admit it and Microsoft won't admit it, but they've stolen a lot of, lot of pages from the Sega playbook. Was when screwed. Xbox come out? Around the same time. But the Xbox only had like a two or three year run. And then like, um, yeah, that was the whole, that's the whole of the debacle. <laughs> but it's not peaked. Xbox still hasn't peaked yet. 
Well, and it hasn't fallen off. I don't know where you're going with this because it's not happening. No, the industry, as Sony. far as the industry goes, I think it's reached its peak in terms of the innovation and in, in the mainstream market. And as no far way. yes, they they yes, all they're doing is doing what the they're doing like the old marketing of like the early 80s and 90s when it was like well this has blast processing and one gigahertz one megahertz processing and it's like they're, they're speaking in terms of stuff that people don't care about like they, they still don't understand gamers and they're still bean counting as for the, the peak is past because they're not innovating anymore and they're not pivoting what they're doing is regurgitating last year's content yeah, but what do they still do? Yeah, regurgitating last year's com- content. Um, the, the and we're just going to talk about Xbox in this one because I don't have the information for PS4, but uh, for P- PlayStation, I don't play it. The Xbox has, you know, it gradually over since two thousand ninety nine, two thousand, whenever it came out, the original came out. I'm not talking about it's sales, for- by the way. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about sales. Okay. I could care. I could give a damn about sales. I'm talking about the box in itself, what it comes with, the controllers, the camera, the everything. Everything you cannot say one thing hasn't has progressively gotten better over the years. Okay, until Xbox One. Okay, I can tell you right now, the camera for Xbox One, twice as good as Xbox 360. The sound and the the internal still hardware. You're missing the point. As- that's still hardware, it's, though. It's, it's not the point, though. So if all this hardware is going to be getting continually getting better, the industry is not going to fall. All right. It's not going to. It hasn't even peaked yet. That's for. I think that the when the, when 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 Xbox and PlayStation come up with a virtual reality set for their consoles, that's when it'll peak. That would depend on the depth of that virtual reality. But I'm saying that's when it'll peak. Mm-hmm. Because that, what else can you do besides three D virtual reality? You when can't they can do actually anything. take, when they can actually take your brainwaves and throw it in a game, that is going to be the peak. Uh, I have to agree with Obi on this. The, I, I understand what you're saying, Yomar, but what they're doing is, is they're not only regurgitating the same old, but they're also throwing in the new, and that is what's making people keep coming and buying. You know, it's it is, there are, and you know, to say that they're throwing out these specs that gamers don't care about is not entirely true. Uh, the The farther along we go, the more the people know what these specs are. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you ask, you could ask a 10-year-old nowadays what they think of the specs of an Xbox One. And they will say, oh man, I love the fact that, you know, they had this this exact CPU. It was in the same computer I had two years ago or something. You know, th- they'll be, 10-year-olds are able to build a computer <laughs> better than me, which I'm not going to say it's sad because... It's I just, just never. The, it's the changing yeah. of the times. It's, though. It is. It's a different era. It's a different generation. I'm in a different generation than you guys. And I'm and I'm not and saying. Oh, fuck off! <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> I'm in a younger generation than you guys, and the generation that's coming up even be- younger than me is going to know even more than my generation. And it's, it, they're going to know those things. They're going to they're going to see them, and they're either going to be impressed or not, depending on their experience with them. And, you know, they are coming up with new things like the Kinect and whatnot, Xbox, the camera's getting better and everything. I have to say I wasn't too impressed with the uh, 360 Kinect, but then again, I played it in a 5 by 5 room. So it cut off my head and it cut off my knees, so I wasn't able to do anything with it. Well, uh, and But thing, things are getting better for it, both systems, in my opinion. And going, and, and, and Yogi, I want to make sure I say this. We're, I'm not disagreeing with you. I do agree um wholeheartedly that the the industry is falling um but there are there are the consoles such as the ps4 and the xbox that are keeping that in the industry alive um because if you think about it if you had the only thing that you had new was like say you had like the wii 2 came out would you really take your money and go buy a wii 2 when we one sucked ass no <laughs> Would you buy, uh, you know, you own the 360 or you own the Xbox and then you own the 360. Would you buy, would you be more likely to buy an Xbox One? Definitely. Would you want to switch to a PS4 because of the graphics are just phenomenal and you can do this and this and this and this? Maybe. It might be a chance, but you're going to keep buying those things, which is eventually going to keep the industry at an alt, at an high. 
I and mean, like I said, the, 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 when, when it's going to peak, nobody's going to know that. I don't think it's peak yet, no. I don't think it's really necessarily falling off. It's kind of leveling, keeping itself leveled out. Xbox and PlayStation or Microsoft and Sony are keeping the industry alive, I would say. I mean, in my, you know, my professional opinion. And honestly, if you think about it, you know, they're the two big hitting gaming consoles. And even if they regurgitate the same system, people are still going to buy it because video games has been integrated into our society to the point to where uh, society can almost not live without them. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, in different cultures, yeah, they've never even heard of a PlayStation or anything. But in America today and England and, you know, all those other... Yogi's winding up. He's like, oh, I get to talk in a minute, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, in our culture, and today's culture for the uh, the more advanced, or I don't want to say... I, I got to interrupt real quick. But, uh, I, I didn't say that in, I didn't say the video games are going to disappear. I'm just saying the consoles, they need to step up in the game if they're going to stay relevant. That I do agree with. And mind yeah, you, I'm, this is based on the... On, 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 on this, on this, mainly on this podcast that that I listen to and we all listen to, and because a lot of a lot of it, it, it sets some ripples out. Some other people were saying the same thing that uh, the gaming industry on a decline. Now, I think I, I I have a good feeling that it's gonna be another video game industry crash like there was in 1983. I see that coming because I, was I uh, that's exactly so you don't know what happened. But I see it happening because they're selling the hardware at cost, or near cost, all right? So as much as they innovate the hardware, (laughs) which honestly, the console manufacturer had no idea what innovation means. They stopped innovating a while back. Uh, They they need to make software sales. They need to get attachments up. So yeah, I agree that the the, the, the Xbox 360 had an amazing run. I am very happy to have the Xbox 360. It improved on the UI, the the, the you know op, the actual operating system has been on the games that it's offering, the 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 way the hardware performs, everything across the board. I do not regret the 360 purchase at all, and I've owned a few 360s in my in, in our mm-hmm. household. Well, but but I feel when I say it's the industry has peaked. I mean, in terms of innovation, there's no longer innovation. As far as the console market, they're just borrowing pages of what from what the PC was doing five, ten years ago. <laughs> you know, every step of the way. You know, and 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 well, and we also the, the other thing I think that really should make us all that we should all raise awareness is about. This is the biggest part. All speculation aside and, and forecasting aside. Is the fact that the the shit that these major these big big companies are getting away with would not fly years ago, like the fact that there's been several cited interviews of people asking, "Hey, so when is this game gonna be released?" It's been delayed several times, and we'd like to know when it'll come out. It's it'll be done when it's done. I mean, the arrogance from these game developer, these publishers, is like. You'll t- you'll you'll take it. They're like Mark Zuckerberg of of of, uh, of Facebook. You know, it's like they they don't give a shit. It's like I got lots of money, and you're gonna eventually buy from me or use my product. So I don't need to do shit that you want. That's kind of the attitude from like the big players in the marketplace. That's why I feel for me personally, I I, I see a lot of hope with the indie market becoming so much more prevalent now, and having the kickstarters and having the crowdfunding and having the Steam green lights and all that stuff. I, it's easier for for there to be more variety of content without all the licensing fees and barriers of entry, you know. That's my, that's what I think. But anyway, so well, I had to I'd say that you were starting you were starting to talk to about the <clears throat> about the music industry. Kind of said a little something on it. If you think about it, what is the what's the cost of a you know just a, a new game? The average cost of a new game is what would you say? Sixty dollars. <throat> Sixty bucks, Yogi. Yeah, yeah. About that on a console well, at get... least. <laughs> right. If we compare video games to the, like I said, the music industry, you guys 
how much is a CD right now? Oh, now and they're like I seen ten dollars or less, really, depending where you go. Um, no, no, no. Uh, you go to uh, you go to a music store. You go to even uh, I went to Walmart and checked it out too. Um, it's still twenty eight bucks for a CD. Um, for a music CD or a ga- or something else. For a music CD of a, and I'm not talking like, you know, somebody that's barely known. I'm talking about a number one platinum winning artist in country and rock and roll rap and it's still 28.95 what where do you live <laughs> let me not go there <laughs> okay no well listen to hear me out well those are not selling right now because and then we said something about this last week and i'm probably getting onto a different topic but forgive me it's the same thing of with the the gaming industry and their uh their media downloads Right. If the games are hard copies are we're just gonna say soldier sixty bucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, but with that hard copy you get this, this, and this. You get a free gun, you get a free, you know, free pad or free vehicle or wherever you're playing. Yeah. And then with the the media downloads, the the uh, for me to have something that I don't have to have this game. I can just download it from the website. I can just log into my account, and I can download it whenever I want. I don't have to have a hard copy. So that's yeah. what's happened to the music as well. So with the, the any of the games, especially with the, the new Xbox, PS4, we're still on this, are going to all these downloadable features to where you don't have to ever, ever leave the house to go get a video game. You can buy it online. Yeah. Because they're giving these Xboxes and all the consoles so much, they're giving them like 300 gigs of hard drive space. How many games can you download? How many, how many, uh, what did you say? It was 7 to 30 gigs? Oh, that was on, uh, that was for PC. Um, but how, how big is a game for Xbox? Do you guys know or PS4? Uh, yeah, they're pretty, they're, they're significant. I mean, they're Blu-ray discs, so they range anywhere from like twenty to thirty gigs on average, okay. at least. Well, anybody in chat, anybody in the stream watching, um, the question is: is how big is a PS4, PS3, PlayStation 360, or PlayStation 360, Xbox 360, or Xbox One game? I want to know how many gigs, how many, how big is it? I call. So, but anyway, well, we're going to wait for that, but it's, uh, where are we at? I know. When you, I, I was going to say something else, but I'm not going to say that because it's going to get into something else. Go ahead, Yogi. I'm not going to say that because then I'll get in trouble. <laughs> Go. Uh. <laughs> I don't want to do that. Name. Well, you know, the, the, the funny thing is like music, music prices have gone down overall and, and in many ways the artists are, are get, getting screwed. So they're learning ways, you know, the artists, music, music artists, to be clear, they make more, they make most of their money off of merchandise deals and touring. Touring is the biggest thing. That's where they make their, their big bucks. Um, and, and some artists are just giving away their music for free now. Like uh, I remember Radiohead. They had the album in rainbows. They gave it for f- away for free online, and Nine Inch Nails did the same thing: free downloads, because I they know it. it's free promotion. Yeah, exactly. I love Radiohead, and you know it's free promotion. They get the, the they get their their music out there, and more people are aware of them and want to buy their merchandise, go to their shows, and all that stuff. Makes sense. Um, and I think in some ways the, the the gaming industry needs to catch up with that because, you know, even. It's it's it boggles my mind that digital content for games is often priced the same as physical copies. I'd rather still have a physical copy, to be honest. There's something about having a physical copy. It's convenient to be able to launch lots of games from a single you know platform like in Steam. But sometimes, right. if it's something I really really want. I'd rather have the physical copy because no one could ever say, yoink, oh, pulled it off the library. We don't have the license for that game anymore, so you can't have it either. But I pay for it already. And this has happened to people, you know. They pull the, 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 you have a digital copy. It's like, oh, we lost the license to the game. So, boom, you don't have it anymore either. You know, um, and then these. That's why I think 
Steam's not going to succeed. They lose way too many copies. They lose way too many keys. Sorry to say that, but it's happened. You know, I'm still... I still think Steam is one of the few companies that ha is going to be prone to failing. Because eventually, historically, every gaming company has gone through like a huge boom and then they just... You know, it's happened to all of them. But I think Steam might be one of the few exceptions because... They're one of the few companies that not only, you know, Valve specifically, Valve, which is behind Steam, they not only develop software and also are involved in hardware projects, but they handle distribution. That's the missing link. They have a huge distribution network that even Xbox Live cannot match. And PlayStation Network is getting up there too, um, with, uh, with the streaming service PlayStation Now and and their uh, PlayStation Plus mm -hmm. and all that stuff, but Steam is a massive distribution network. Not only that, they they're integrating the whole crowdfunding aspect to get you know indie developers to be able to fund projects. That's huge. That and the Steam Greenlight and Steam Workshop. I mean, it's it's like a never ending chain of content. And as long as you have content in this economy, you know, and information, you, you have the the edge. So. I think Steam is going to be in good shape for a long time. And the only way I see them disappearing is if they finally say, you know what, we've, we've had our run. Let's just sell our resources to another company and, you know, ride off to the sunset. I don't see them, like, filing for bankruptcy or just feeling flat out. Well, that's what they've been doing with the, the server shutdowns on, on retired games. Yeah, that's a dumb move. And... and, and I, mean, I, I still want to have some do, faith in them. <laughs> do they not know that that if they keep doing this, they're going to be shutting down their own company because eventually we're going to find a different company that does the same thing that's not shutting down these games, and then we're going to say, Steam, have a great day. Fuck you. <laughs> but that's mainly the publishers, though, like EA. EA is really bad about that. They do that on the consoles, too. Especially with their Madden games. They shut down servers and it's like, rup, rup, new version's out. I know you bought, you just bought this game, but, and we took your money, no problem. But hey, you gotta buy a new version if you wanna play online. Well, but just like what you were just talking about, Steam's good, Steam's this, Steam's that. You gotta remember too. Um, I mean, I just said it a few seconds ago. I, don't, I didn't even read this. Um, but Steam's pulled off the games like right off your library. And then with what what I told you guys before, my 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 main Steam Steam account had thirty games on it, and I can't even find the account anymore. Yeah, that's they that's... they don't have it. There's no record of a Steam account with that email address anymore. So where's my crap? Where's all the the hundreds of dollars that I spent on the games? Yeah, that, that's that's scary stuff. That's why I hope I I do not look forward to a day when it's all purely digital, uh, games on the consoles or anything. I. I, I, again, I, there should always be some kind of physical thing. Is is there something about it? Like I like the smell of the discs and the new booklets. I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't well, know the smell, but you know. But anyway, no. But what what I've been doing is when I buy a game, okay, um, when you know you get to the receipt page, and it has the game number and the what print it, it out. is and where it is, I print every one of them out. Yeah. Some sometimes you don't have a printer and you can't do it. You you know if you don't have a printer you can't do it. But I have one, and it's a wireless printer to my wife's office. And all I do is I print that page and she sees what it is and she bring either leaves it there and I come get it or she brings it to the door and say do we have something printed off? It's just a receipt, because if you're in the gaming industry and this is what you do, uh, tax time comes around. Guess what? Those games if you're trying to work your business to make money off those games those can be a write-off you just got to do it right i mean don't you know i don't advise anybody to cheat on your taxes whatsoever but those can be write-offs if you you know it depends on what you're doing with them too and that's just something you ask your whoever's it's a pain in the ass uh you have to file the schedule a b and c and do all the other crap Ugh, itemization Ugh. no no bueno but you know what? Another, another thing that is also interesting that we have to think about, like a lot of times people say the prices in software and games are about the same as they always have been. But no, because inflation. 
Right. So not only are we paying more for game for games now, but then inflation, we really are playing. I, I really want to. I don't want to exaggerate, but you know, I think we're playing paying playing paying close to like like I don't know like 70, 80 bucks, ninety bucks per game. So when you put that into perspective, that's a lot of freaking money to be dropping for a game, and then all the shenanigans that go along with that. It, ah. It drives me crazy. And then, and then, and then, they, and then they say, say, oh, you can't have this anymore. Sorry, you only bought a digital copy. Have a great day. We have no idea who you even are. <laughs> Would you like to buy this game? Bastards. Mm-hmm. So I think you know a, a bigger, a, a big issue with it. You want to mention? You want to talk about this point here, Obi or Soldier? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So she goes, hmm, we're just about oh. close. Well, well go uh, ahead. Uh, uh, okay, so anyway, AAA overspending, uh, 300% increase in spending on Tomb Raider. Uh, Don't read it verbatim, weirdo. I can't help it. I'm Make it your <laughs> own. <laughs> Tomb Raider had too much money. He says, invested. I can't. I can't do it myself. Can you help me finger out it out? <laughs> Ah, soldier can't. Soldier can't do it. He can't do it. <laughs> he can't do it. He can't do it. Hey, so you, you under pressure. Yogi, anyway. you might you might need to help him figure it out. <laughs> Shut up, both of you. Shut up, both of you. Anyway, so apparently, uh, Tomb Raider. They spent way too much money making it and made too, way too little money on it. Um, I find it kind of weird that they would spend so much money to make it uh the tomb raiders have always been good games uh in the strategy puzzle side of it although i could never figure them out i just <laughs> played them for the boobs um boobs boobs her boobs are getting smaller each game by the way for, for those regulars for horseplay dude. boobs are our main feature anyway <laughs> Anyway, but so uh, the fact that they spent so much money to make this game, and I actually have a copy of it right here for the 360, Tomb Raider. My wife likes playing it. Well, she would if she ever opened it. Um, but <laughs> it's unopened. It's, it's still got plastic on it. You have been it. Tried, proved wrong. I'll be, I'll be giving you my address after the show. I tried, tra- I tried, I tried trading it in at GameStop. They wouldn't accept it because they don't accept unopened games. Don't know why. Um, <laughs> but really? anyway, yeah, they don't. They don't. They will not accept unopened games. Be- and the reason being, from the way he explained it, they don't know where what's in the game. If it's, I don't know if maybe they had trouble with people actually taking just the cases and packaging them up properly and trading them in, and then not knowing until somebody actually buys it or what. Wow. If I was like, well, I can open it now, right? He's like, no, you got to take it out of here. You got to open it at home, and you got to bring it back tomorrow. They found some midget porn inside a game case. I, I, that happens all the time. Dude, you'd think they'd accept it more often then. Midget porn's awesome. It That's true. They, they, they put but, a lot of vigor into it. They're like, ee, 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 ee. That's, where, that's where she went. Damn it. You put it in their <laughs> Xbox case, you retired. <laughs> Anyway, those are my so, midget porn collection. In the wood box, not the Xbox case. Wood box. It, I know it's. Uh, well, it's unopened. That's the thing. It still has plastic on it. So anyway, uh, you're good at packaging. <laughs> I am good at packaging. Okay, anyway. It's not what um, she said. <laughs> French movies. She can't say anything. She's speechless. She's gasping for breath. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, from the stroke that you gave her, because it's not... Never mind. Yeah, the stroke that I got. Anyway, all right, let's get off and the set goes, subject. <laughs> That's it? She does oh, it times. Hey, off the she subject. She does it times. She goes, really? You're going to stop now? Hell oh, yeah. I'm tired. Dude, anyway. midget porn is awesome. <laughs> Behemoth, you are a badass. <laughs> Behemoth is keeping track of all our big quotes. <laughs> big quote, another quote to write down. Dude, midget porn is awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Ha- hashtag mid porn. <laughs> when we, we're in the bowling alley next week, I'm going to say that because that's who it is. That's the guy that I bowl with. And I'm going to say hashtag midget porn or MP. Hashtag MP. Well, as you're in the middle of your 
He's gonna laugh. As you're in the middle of your, or always, actually, while he's in the middle of his like formation, he's about to like wind up and then like release, be like, "Dude, midget point is awesome," and be like, "What the hell?" I'm Gutter ball. Do it right when he pulls. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna like, follow one up or like go right behind him and be like, ee, 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 ee. <laughs> <laughs> kind of midget porn are you watching? <laughs> That's like mini, anyway. mini me. <laughs> mini you. Mini okay. me. We anyway, do not anyway, hump the laser. Back on subject. Okay, back on subject. Back on subject. Uh, so Tomb Raider spent way too much money to make it. Made too little on it. Uh, that I think has nothing to do with the actual quality of the video game. I believe it's more in, I believe it's more in the fact that what the hell were you thinking? Aspect <laughs> of it, uh, they probably had some new guy in charge of it, and he screwed up. I mean, we probably won't see that happen with that guy again. So I, I'm not expecting to see whoever that is make another one. Um, but so, oh my nose! All right. So anyway, uh, also. Even though Xbox One and PS4 had a bunch of crap going on uh, before they released, they ended up being the biggest console launches of all time. Of course, that could always be uh, that could always be added to the fact that the population increased. Um, so I <laughs> sorry, I could... <laughs> but it, I mean the the longer the the longer that. I mean, the more the longer that humanity lives without a freaking nuclear war, the more people are going to buy systems because there's more people. Uh, so I can kind of understand that. Besides that, they are the next gen. So you've got the diehard fans for both systems. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it's <clears throat> it's one of those things. You either buy it and hate it or you don't buy it and you hate yourself for not buying it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that's just the way it is. I mean, besides that, you got a lot of people out there that buy both, you know. Instead of uh, buying a car. Instead of buying a car. They're, they're riding the bus everywhere, but I got oh, all the systems. Oh, oh. Ladies and gentlemen, do not buy a car. Buy a freaking motorcycle. You want to look like a badass. <laughs> Basically, what, we're, what we've all been talking about for the last, holy crap, um, unteen hour. Uh, is basically we just all cut the BS guys. All you guys that are, you know, you make us pay for the game and you just, you don't want to give it to us. If I'm paying for a game, I want it whenever I want to play it. If you yank it. What the hell? Yeah, yeah, that, that will be our next and, subject. Behemoths in chat, freaking <laughs> tripping right now. Anyway, but <laughs> oh, but I if I'm gonna pay for the game, I want I want that game. I own that game. Mm-hmm. Okay, that 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 disc, that game that you sent me, that I picked up from the store, that is mine. I paid for it. That's consumer one hundred and one. Mine. Yes. <laughs> okay, the Valve Steam. There's exceptions to everything because things can be returned. Things they do have. I don't care what anybody says to you. Steam, Valve, all those guys that do that thrive on the uh, the um, hard copy less games, such as you know the media and, and downloading from the web. Um, there's there's all sorts of, of, of backup files and, and logs and everything that they can look at. I mean, I don't know how they lose them, and it's beyond me when they do. But what makes them different from Nintendo, Capricorn, EA? Did I even Capcom? Capricorn. Wow. <laughs> Capcom, EA, Activision, and ID. And, and, and any other big players. I mean, what do you guys? I mean, do you guys have anything with what makes everything different that we can even decide what we're talking about right now? Well, it's like I said earlier, like Steam has their own distribution channels, and they've become pretty self-sufficient. So, plus people are freaking dying for like Half-Life Three to come out. So, <laughs> they got the fan base, they got the co-following, they got the marketplace, they control the supply and the demand. I mean. They're in a very good position, right. but uh, yeah, I think just overall, I I think if the gaming industry wants to continue to grow, they need to 
to see what's working on the PC that's making it easier for new developers, indie developers to break into the marketplace and, you know, cut some of the licensing fees out, cut some of the BS out. You know, another thing, one of the biggest places where there's spe wasting, not even spending, wasting tons of money is traditional marketing. You know, um, some of these games that don't need to have uh, print ads or freaking TV spots should just go the social media route. I mean, you know, that's what the indie developers do. They can't spend millions of dollars for a TV spot, you know, or, you know, on a radio spot. I mean... And, and let's be honest, those things are fading away. People are consuming television and radio in different ways. People, very few people are actually watching TV on a regular TV over the waves. I mean, seriously, who does that? <laughs> Midget Necro. That, that's that's the conclusion of this whole thing. But, but anyway, I think it, I think it's a, a lot of interesting points. It's, it's a very wide uh, scope. There's certainly a lot of things that are wrong with the industry. It, uh, as far as the hardware, the hardware is gonna keep peaking, and yeah, one day we'll actually have virtual reality that'd be worth a damn. That's not, that isn't the Oculus Rift, uh, <laughs> you know. And they've been trying to do virtual reality for how many years? I mean, they had ev every like decade, you know, or so they have uh, some kind of virtual reality. Every five years or so. I mean, remember, anybody remember the Virtual Boy? So the hardware is not the issue. <laughs> no one remembers the virtual boy. <laughs> I, got no I got no reaction from that. <laughs> I do. I, I got it. I got it, yeah. But, you know, it, it's not the, the issue is not the hardware innovation. The issue is uh, empowering the consumers to make them feel like they actually made a good buying purchase, which they're not doing now. Give them the confidence to buy with X company or Y company. And also make it easier, provide the proper tools you know, make make it break down the barriers for developers, so they can you know not only produce new content but also localize content. There's a lot of stuff that comes out um in overseas markets that we'll never see here in the states unless we're gonna be hardcore enough to to port or hack it somehow ourselves. Um, and there's a lot of good stuff that never makes it because you know the the BS of the industry. And it's not, it's usually not the developers, the publishers and just the bean counters and those, and those companies that are just messing it up for everyone else. Um, mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's a need for change. Uh, otherwise, I do feel like, you know, within our lifetime, actually sooner than later, I think there's going to be a major crash in the gaming industry again. Because um, there are also, there are a lot more, uh, well, there are a lot more consoles out there than we know of. Not, not, not the big ones, not the big three or so, but there's a lot of other ones out there as well. So, something needs to give. <laughs> right. Well, and you got to remember, too, that um, there are going to be downfalls and, and, and rises, and I could be totally wrong, and a new console could come out right now and, and be totally successful. Um, we don't know that. I mean, that's just, just what it is. Um, we're going to do uh, a little bit of... Uh, we're getting ready to do the dust-off here uh, in a few minutes. We have actually... One other thing we're going to do before that, though, is... Whoa. What? 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 Don't look at my like, typing. What? Are you are you <laughs> messing me up? I'm like, hey, yeah, dead air. Who, you know, dead air. Yeah. I'm going to put this out right now. Geeks, you guys want to come on? It does say Geeks Engaged. So if you guys want to come on and talk to us, I'm going to open. There is something we need to do first. Um, but I am going to open it up to um, TeamSpeak. We're going to have a couple call-ins here in the future. If you guys want to call or get on TeamSpeak, the information is right there, right underneath Horseplay. And... Um, if you guys do, like I said, uh, just get in TeamSpeak, and I will then pull you into the channel, and you guys can talk to to us and see what you guys uh, we're going to be doing some dust off. Maybe you can share with us what you've dusted off yourself uh, over this past week, and maybe even uh, stick around for some free balling in the in the future. So, uh, or in the in the in the in the near near future. But anyway. 
What do you guys think about what do you guys think about indie games or the state of the gaming industry as a whole? That's the question. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, nobody's gonna answer. <laughs> well, I thought that's for the audience, not for us. No, that's for you. But well, I, th- I think I already went off on a tangent about the whole thing. I think, okay. uh, as, you know, it's like I love, I love Battlefield Four. I would love to play with you guys, but just because of my disdain towards EA, I, I just I'd rather buy a piece of shit and wear it as a hat first. That's how I feel <laughs> about it. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do to you. It's like uh, they're great games, but like yeah. that they just they do such stupid stuff, man. Like the, the endless DLC, they they you pay money up front, then you gotta pay money in the tail end, and then they have no. We're committed to them, but then no reciprocation, and that that pisses me off, especially when we have so many other options, you know. Yeah, well, and and i don't think the, the the to to answer my own question i don't really think that the uh indie games or uh the state of you know even the industry itself is going to go anywhere um i think it's just going to continue to um do what it's going to do the games that you have to not so much pay for um, what you want, but if you want to get further faster, you have to pay. That's always going to be there. Um, just the little things that I mean, I think it's going good right now. Um, there's the right amount of the bigger games, such as the Firefall, um, that are just huge. And then you even got people that do podcasts around that, such as Tony. Um, and he he's a Firefall guy, and that's just I mean that's just where he works at and what he does. But that's just there's things that's I've never even heard of that game before when it came before it came out. I didn't know what it was. Now I want to play the damn game, but I don't want to buy it because I don't want to spend that much money on it because of what I've already spent on anyway. You guys? Soldier, you got any uh, ranting to do yet? <laughs> ranting. Oh, soldier! Uh, I think I guess he uh, he he's looking at major porn. <laughs> so anyway, that, that that's 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 the suggested uh, content. And... Wow! I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna do that. Do what? No, <laughs> I, suggested content. I'm not gonna do it. Um, why don't you guys go ahead and uh, mute your um, speakers, I guess. My speakers? Actually, I'm just going to put mine on push talk. Yeah, I have mine on push to talk. We're on TeamSpeak now, by the way, guys, if you want to. Uh, or TeamSpeak or whatever. Today. But anyway, the TeamSpeak is open. Um, but what we are going to do is we are going to take for you guys to give you a chance to get call in a little bit. We are over time, but we are going further into time and finishing this horseplay the right way, which, uh, by the way, is uh, the farewell to a soldierism. He did get a job um, and be able to take care of his family a little bit more, which is which is awesome. So, uh, sure, not a problem. Muting. My little um, boy is growing so fast. Where does all the time go? So, so <laughs> the soldier realized that I can't hear him. Wait, I see lips moving. What the hell is going on? Is this the Twilight Zone? I see lips moving, but I don't hear anything. No, seriously, I don't. Eat me, eat my ass. I'm trying to read his lips. I can't hear Obi either. What the crap? Oh, they're telling me to go to TeamSpeak? Go to TeamSpeak. You just told us to do that. Anyway, we'll be right back, guys. Enjoy the music. We'll be right back at a commercial break, and we're going to be doing uh, a dust-off. So give us one uh, one of you guys that want to jump on TeamSpeak and maybe dust off some of your games you've been playing over the last week. We'll be right back right after this uh, important song. Sounds good. <laughs> TeamSpeak test.
All right, let me figure this. Stay on Skype, man. I stay on Skype. Just stay on Skype because you can't hear anybody on Teamspeak. It means you don't have it set up. Yeah, I don't know why he's doing that lately. It's being funky monkey. Oh, I know why. I know why. All right. Welcome back. That was the a short, short little, little break. break. We were trying to get uh, Yogi on TeamSpeak here, but uh, it's just not working correctly or well or whatever. But he can still hear. Uh, we're still on Skype as well. So once he gets that done, we, we are going to start um, the dust off. Guys, um, I know you. we've all three been playing um, lots of games this past week. Um, I figured now, out my team speak issue, by the way. <laughs> right. You turn your speaker off. So that's why you can't hear us. No, I turned it off now because it's getting a really killer echo. Uh -huh. I heard you twice. You sounded like the voice of God. And you're like, please come. Oh, come to me. But I anyway, will um, give you midget porn. Here we go with the midget porn again. Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with uh, some of the games that uh, I've been dusting off this week. And um, one is, I know it's not really, I know I've been playing it periodically, but I've been getting back into uh, World of Warcraft really, really heavy. Um, and uh, I've been actually playing a little bit of League, which uh, for everybody, that's kind of... Um, That's kind of like, uh, you know, basically the equivalent of me playing. Thank you. Anyway, let's go. Uh, World of Warcraft, and I, uh, I actually got out Battlefield 3 2, um, and then Total War Shogun 2. I started playing a little bit of uh, this this week, and we're not going to be able to do this because I'm not listening to that. But go, uh, Soldier, what have you been dusting off this week, man? Besides your, your Gears of War 2, if you say that, I'm going to slap it's not, you. It's not Gears of War 2. Okay, go. It's, it's Guild Wars 2. <laughs> <laughs> that too. By the way, Team Speak okay, uh, audio quality sounds like I'm talking through a, sh a rusty shoe. I, I, I don't think it's going to work out with... Yogi, he's not doesn't have it set up properly. Um, yeah, just Yogi, turn yours off, and we'll uh, the uh, whoever's on team speaking just talk to mine. Sound, muted. but we're gonna turn the uh, Skype back on, so we're actually gonna get back to it. But um, soldier, have you, what's anything else that you've um, just kind of thought about and did, even did a couple minutes of this week? Technical difficulties. Sound uh, online play because oh, the game has made it to where Dungeon Siege 1 and 2. Go. Okay. Dungeon Siege 1 and 2 um, cannot play multiplayer. Um, you actually have to play and mess with it. So the first one has an easy fix. Um did fix it, and I did play with him a little bit on it, and the, the dungeon sieges are awesome. I find them to be incredibly great, especially the first one. The first one, of course, is the best. So, it's definitely the one I enjoy playing. Alright, um, and, and uh, I know we've, all three of us have played, have you guys played any Smite? Lately, oh, I've been playing some Armada Online too this week as well. Um, what level are you guys in that game? Right? No, Armada. Armada? Uh, mm -hmm. I think three. I think. Okay, you gotta catch up. One of my one of my ships is level eight. I I haven't been playing it. It's actually getting really really good. So it's uh, I think we got that fixed, yo. Yay, Yogi's just sitting there with his mouth half open. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. They're just, just yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, he turned on the Skype now. 
Yeah. 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 Sound yeah. Muted. yeah. So that that'll make it easier for you. <laughs> yeah. But there anyway. we go. <laughs> uh yogi what have you been dusting off i know you said you were playing uh quite a few games this week i mean what uh what do you got going on for us man well i i started to play the quest for mighty mighty quest for epic loot which i had started to try out on uh when it was in beta closed beta and then ubisoft decided to cut off the server because they're weird like that they're, they're becoming just as bad as ea but uh, now it's on steam and i was about to play it and and once you log on to your Uplay account, and and then they like, uh, then they had to pay for it. And it's like, oh, I, I said, I'm done. <laughs> right. It's supposed to be a free to play model with microtransactions. I'm like, ah, nah, screw this. It's like, I, I just, I wasn't that interested. It's, it, it's neat, but to me, it's like Dungeon Keeper, but in the Ubisoft world. And I already have Dungeon Keeper, the the new one, uh, War for the Overworld, which I think is pretty cool, and. I can't wait for them to finish that game, which is still in early access. But I, I play, I dabble a little bit in Trials Evolution HD, uh, which I got over the, the Steam holiday sale. That's cool. Play a lot more Marvel Puzzle Quest, a game I have not mentioned enough. I don't, I don't think I mentioned it at all before. Marvel Puzzle Quest is probably one of my most played games in 2013. It's free to play if you like puzzle games. Not only is it a puzzle game, but it's a lot of strategy to it because like. Yeah, superheroes have different powers, and this game is so much fun, and it's truly free to play. Like, there's a paywall if you f really want to fast track, but it's not like a paywall where you hit the paywall and it's like I can't advance unless I pay money. So, Marvel Puzzle Quest, I definitely recommend checking it out, man. It's it's a fun game, and there's some social levels, some social layers to it where you can like help your friends out by giving them gifts and items and whatnot. I dabbled a little bit in Simpsons Tapped Out since we're talking about mobile games a little bit. And that's a pretty interesting game. It's like a crackhead of Sim City. <laughs> it's yeah, I played that. That's that's an interesting one. Yeah, I don't know. It's free to play, it, and it's got good humor. the The graphics are cool. You know, for a mobile game, you know, you can't spend much for a mobile game, but it's cool. But it it, yeah. it looks like it needs a lot more commitment than I'm willing to give. <laughs> uh, but I, like, I actually haven't had too much games. Too much gaming this this past uh, week. I did uh, Steam Marines again. I'm really enjoying that. Uh, play some more Rogue Legacy. And actually got much further in the game. Play some more Smite. Some Dota 2. Magic 2014. LOL. And of course some Mata Online. And this is the biggest one. I'm trying to move it along. I, uh, I, apparently I've had my, uh, Hearthstone beta key, a beta access for like three or four months and I missed the email somehow. Noob. Yeah. So, you know, I finally, uh, give it a whirl today and, uh, I was enjoying it. Uh, I hate forced tutorials. Hate them. <laughs> like I've watched so much gameplay videos of the game already. I, I know the game inside out. I just wanted to jump right in. At least start playing against some bots or some, or some like new players like Which myself. Game? Hearthstone. Yeah, that's that's a, that's an interesting game. My wife will play you. Sure, let's do it. We'll stream. Don't do it. She gets mean. My wife will <laughs> smoke your ass in that game. <laughs> that's dude. fine. She gets mean. I've heard her stream, and she's, oh my goodness, she's lethal, man. She, but, she makes Obi sound like a saint. <laughs> but uh, you know, I just hated the fact. Confirm nor decline that. Statement. <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> You're gonna get me in trouble. That's the problem. The only thing She's I know is, <laughs> I beat. The, I, I, she I, is. I, is she watching? <laughs> She's not in the chat, is she? I oh, don't know. It's one thirty in the morning. She ain't watching me anymore. Woo! I think you. Oh wait, wait. Well, Behemoth actually wanted to add something to the the sound off the uh, geeks engaged. And Behemoth yeah. says that it's you know the the, the industry is definitely on a downward spiral. And unless there's a big break on tech or something, the market will continue to oversaturate itself. He says, honestly, there are so many games that now that it's impossible to play all the games or even attempt to buy them all unless you have the money flowing out of your ass. <laughs> it's true. There is a lot of games out there nowadays. The rest of us are not even going to repeat it. <laughs> I just... I, I don't know if you guys seen this meme where there's like this like uh, Indian dude going... 
I don't even know what it is, but I don't know. Weird stuff right. that I hear well, the kids and, and Behemoth to. just, uh, he said he dusted off some games too this week. And um, he did dust it off a little bit, uh, some of uh, some derp. And then uh, he played a little bit of derp. And then uh, he followed that up with a little bit more derp. Um, <laughs> Derpy derp. But then, but then he just says, uh, derp is enough for me. Uh, he's derping around, just derp derping. So, uh, congrats to Behemoth with, uh, for the derping this week. You are the derp <laughs> winner of the week. Um, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, there's actually just... there's actually a game called Derp. I saw it somewhere. I know, I know. I checked it out. Derp. It's Derp. D e r p e d. Derp. Huh. Anyway, it's yeah. Well, yeah, we should play some Armada online, and uh, now that I have, a, I'm on the Hearthstone bandwagon. We could jam on that too. Apparently, I'm gonna have to grind a lot to get anywhere significant. Because all I have right. is my lowly mage. Well, this definitely looks like a game where you have to pay to win. I can, I get the feeling. Got a max level paladin, so. Yeah, I see. This looks like, like it's a kind of game where you have to grind a lot and or pay money or both. If you see my name or if you ever play my name, okay, you need to make sure you text me. Obi, are you on Hearthstone? No. So then, if you do play my wife, you just need to run. Just, just quit <laughs> because she's gonna mess, dude. Give it up. She will mess you up. I'm definitely. It's my. It's mine. I mean, she. We're in the same household and everything, but it's. I'm definitely gonna buy it for her, um, <laughs> just because she's good. She likes it, just it too. So happens to be that I have a uh, full max level paladin, and uh, almost max level hunter too because of her. So <laughs> thank you, honey. <laughs> I got my mage, Janna, or whatever her name is. <laughs> I literally Janna. finished the tutorial Janna. and I was like, <laughs> I don't know. Ooh. And 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 then for the derp award, we have a derp you mate. Don't even know why he said mate, but you know, I'm acting like he's. First time I saw that from Behemoth when he said mate on stream, I was like, oh dude, that's like he's like a. You know, Australian dude. Well, he lives right down the freaking road. <laughs> so, derp. Anyway. Derp. Maybe he has an Australian family or something. I don't know. Yeah, mate. Maybe he likes to mate. That could be a thing, too. With midgets. <laughs> in in the perfect dark. That are dead. That are dead. On a porn scene. What, at, what point do the, at what point do the bees get involved? After he smites the steam marines <laughs> and does trials of evolution with that image. <laughs> I'm puzzled by your quest to make this I, into I a think, marvel. I think we're all losing our sanity here. Yes. All right, guys. Next. We're getting... Wow. Deals for cheap bastards. Um, and the reason we do do this segment is because we are all cheap bastards. Um, none of us, 83 of us, we got one yawning, which is the cheapest bastard of us all. Soldier, what do you got for us this week, man? All right. Well, speaking of Dungeon Siege, Dungeon Siege 2 is actually on sale. Dollar seventy four on Green Man Gaming. Uh, you can get all these deals at Cheap Shark. It tells you all the deals that all other companies are doing. Steam, Gamers Gate, Green Man Gaming, all that kind of stuff. Um, Battlefield 4 apparently is on sale for $40. Uh, that's $20 off. That's not bad. Oh, God. Um, Shush. What? Why'd you what? say that? <laughs> Battlefield 4 on sale, $40. Uh, then here's one that Yomar will like. Skullgirls. It's on sale. seven fifty. Uh, take a look here. Um, Mirror's Edge is on sale for $5. Spellforce 2. It's on sale. Uh, Icewind Dale Complete is on sale. Uh, that one I might look into getting because that comes from the Forgotten Realm series, uh, like Baldur's Gate and everything. Um, it's on oh, sale yeah. for two forty nine. That's a good deal. Um, both Darksiders are on sale. The first one for five dollars, and the second one for seven fifty. 
Uh, and then you can always go to the Steam Featured, of course, and check out their deals. Um, Nidhog is on sale, 20% off. Looks intriguing. Um, yes. Broken Age is on sale, 10% off, so it's $23. Uh, next car game is on sale for $25. Never heard of it. Looks like it's like a derby or something. Um, but, yep, so Starbound still not on sale. Hate that. Been looking out for that. Um, <laughs> Battle Worlds Cronus is on sale, 33% off. So it's $23. Um, that looks to be all the all the big deals that are happening right now. Uh, it just hasn't been the same since the winter sales have ended. It just has not even been close to being the same. Thank goodness. Um, what do you mean? Th- yeah, that's true. We'd, I'd be broke. Yeah. Broke yeah. But yeah, you can always get all these line. deals. <laughs> so how does she feel the next morning after you broke her? I'd have to say speechless. She sleeps all morning because of it. Uh, Sorry. But you, you can look at all these. I'm things. losing it, guys. Oh, we're all losing it. It's all going. Hey, uh, I think you guys should know that in the the comments section for Broken Age, one of the comments says, "A spoon in this game has more personality than most AAA game protagonists." <laughs> I'm glad we're not labeled as protagonists then. <laughs> so apparently Behemoth says that uh, next car game looks really good. So that might be one to keep our eyes out on. Um, but you can look at all these deals at CheapShark.com. Uh, it's more of a forum of uh, gaming websites that have sales. Mm-hmm. Uh, really good deal. Uh, you can always glance through that, take a look at the more popular ones. And uh, you never know. You might find that one game you've been looking for, like Starbound, if it ever goes on sale. (laughs) So that would be our cheap bastard moment, the last one I'll be doing for a while. Right. Um, (laughs) And then you guys, uh, did you you say something about the Torchlight 2, those ones that are printed right here? Uh they're not coming up on my list. Are they through Steam? No, it's on the show notes. But anyway, guys, uh, Torchlight Two is only four ninety nine. It was. It uh, was. Plus... It ended. It ended. Okay, I lied. That was last week. Um, I lied again, and we're done. <laughs> so, um, thanks. Um, for those that are cheap bastards, that is where you need to go. That website is right to the side and right below uh, Soldierism Stream. And it's www.cheapshark.com. Go check that out. They got deals all the time. So what we are going to do right now is I want to say something to everybody and, every, and you know, just because um, I support, um, you know, indie games. And I support um, one of those indie games is Armada Online. We did talk about, we did have an interview last week with Mark Jordan of um, Armada. And uh, it was a really, really exciting. Uh, if you guys haven't uh, heard or watched that that cast, go ahead. And just uh, right here on Twitch, you guys can check that out. It's episode five. Um, and then I even made a uh, another little highlight for you guys uh, that you guys can blah, 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 blah. That you guys can actually watch uh, just the interview itself. Um, but I do want to say we we really want you guys to support Armada Online. It's on Steam Greenlight. You guys can go, um, and uh, the the alpha build uh, is available for free. Um, it's basically it's it's not even beta yet, guys. The beta won't come out until we get it on Steam. And how to get it on Steam, Yogi? How do we get this on Steam? Tell your friends, share it, like it. And all that good stuff, so we get more votes. Uh, I, th- I think it's something crazy. Like you have to have like fifty thousand votes. votes. Yes. It's um, crazy. If you guys like, like I said, the alpha is out. So if you don't know exactly if you want to vote yes or not, you can try it out. And if you guys do, uh, once those get online, maybe we get some giveaways for Armada Online in the future as well. So stay tuned, guys. If we can get these games, we're definitely gonna do it. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, if you guys like space sim- sims, this is the way to go. Check out FTL, uh, Angle of Attack, Starpoint Gemini 2. Uh, this comes comes out with first game. Uh, Space Hulk. I know he said this is some of uh, uh, Yogi's, uh, some of Yogi's indie watch, and I'm just kind of reading it off for him. Um, and then you guys, if you guys haven't tried it, I did try it. Steam Marines. Um, it's actually pretty cool. Um, I didn't think I would like it, but it's actually pretty pretty. Uh, eh. It's one of the games you actually really, really have to want to play. Is that safe to say, Yogi? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's, he's it's, trying it's, it's, it. No! I like it. It's good. It's but good. what... <laughs> oh, man. This is the time, and I'm gonna. we're going to do this for right about 30 seconds, guys. We're going to take about a 30-second little break we're going to get right into it um if you guys do want to get in on the free ball in section this is the time to get on steam this is the last time put the steam up or the team speak sorry get on team speak you guys can spit off some free ball on with us in this segment but we will be right back um doing a free ball and then we're actually gonna be shutting down the show for the night wishing soldierism a happy good night or a happy something or other I don't really necessarily know what to say happy to. We'll be right uh, back, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be thinking good riddance. <laughs> no more old jokes. <laughs> Someone just passed gas. Mm. This one. Wow, that music just kind of went off right at the last second. Anyway, welcome back, guys. This is Horseplay, and... um, um, Team speaks going away. That's fine. Um, as you guys do see right beside Yogi, um, if you guys do want any kind of blog access, and I say, I think I'm saying this way too early, but it says it right here. Click on blogs, Toby. So that's what I'm going to do. And kind of, I think I'm just going to let it sit there for a second. But we will be right back. Today's topic for the free ball, and, and yes, soldier, go ahead, take off your pants. It's okay. It's the last one. If Ugh. I see, if I see anything. I'm going to come to your house in Kansas, and I'm going to make sure that you know that you're not. Wait, never mind. You're going to come to Kansas, big boy? No, no, no. You want to come to where? Now, the topic is for for all you. Dude, you need to get that stuff out of here. For all the gamers, okay, you guys know when you start a game, Yogi, you were complaining about this earlier. Soldier, you were complaining about a three-hour earlier as well. When you start a game, and you at the beginning of it, I had to do it with League of Legends. But is Force tutorials are they dumb or not? There it is, Force tutorials. It's not something really exciting, but I want to hear what you guys have to say because I know you guys have both dealt with it. That you have to play this two and a half hour, three hour tutorial, and then you don't even like the damn game when you're done with it. Is it good or not? No. <laughs> Free balling at its finest right there, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just in case you didn't hear, let me, let me take the pop filter out. No. Ow. <laughs> Holy crap. Does mine sound like that? No. Okay, I was going to say, does mine? I mean, dude, I'm, I'm going to like get way back here to talk and shit. It sounds like that. Soldier? I mean, here's I'm, the I'm thing about through. tutorials, and you, t- you guys tell me what you think. <laughs> See, it's my turn to talk. It's okay, go, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Take my turn. There was dead air. I was trying to fill the dead air. Expl- explain. There was no dead air. We were laughing at you. <laughs> there was no dead air whatsoever. We were sitting there. Oh, we're just gonna laugh at uh, Yogi, just because. Left my dirt. 
anyway, I, I agree with you. On that. Obi, look at Obi's face. He's like, what? Just go. <laughs> so, I gotta agree with. I gotta agree with Yomar on this. I do not believe force tutorials are a good thing. That being said, I've also played games where it's nearly impossible to find the tutorial. Uh, and games like it. games like that suck balls because you don't know anything about what to do. Um, prime examples, I suppose one of them would have to be Mech, Mech Warrior Online. I had a difficult time. I still have a difficult time trying to figure out how the heck to assign buttons to my guns. Um, how to assign... <laughs> I know how to do that. <laughs> oh, I do too now. I mean, I talk to some guys, but it's one of those things, if you're by yourself, it's kind of hard to figure that stuff out. It's hard talk to figure to out. It's, 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 it can be difficult. Um, <laughs> but for games that force you through the tutorial, I mean, especially on the bigger games, is kind of ridiculous, because it's like, I know how to do this. Can I skip it? And so the games that either literally ask at the very beginning, do you want to go through the tutorial? Or the games that allow you to hit start, skip tutorial, those ones are prime in my in my opinion. Well, and and I kind of I at at, at one point I really don't like it because then I have to waste all this time. But then at the other side, I'm okay, for one, what am I doing? I'm learning how to play the game, learning the buttons and the controls. Or otherwise, I would have to get into a situation to say, oh, what key is that? I have to pause the game, then get into controls. If there's a point like Mech Warrior Online and you can't pause it because you're going to get lit up by some freaking machine you don't even see three miles away. Yes, I'm glad that there is force tutorials because once it's making letting you know how to play the game, it's giving you a little insight of what the game is about. So if you're not going to like the tutorial, most people are not going to play the game, and then guess what? I'm 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 not out now. I've I've learned how to play this game, you know, just from the tutorial. You might, you might have to do it a couple of times, but you've learned how to play the game, and now you've only spent two or three hours on it, opposed to spending all that time playing the game trying to learn the controls. So, are force tutorials good? I think so in some instances. When I start a new account, am I going to be forced to do the tutorial again? Probably. Do I want to? Probably not. Don't start another account. Or you it. could just add a simple gate, yes or no. <laughs> do yeah, you, do you know what you're doing? Point. Yes or no. <laughs> and it's it kind of boils down to, you know, you got the games where you can pick different characters and... You know, those ones, people are going to play multiple characters. Uh, for, you know, when you play games like uh, World of Warcraft and whatnot, if they had a certain tutorial that was boring that you'll get out of, but they made you take it every time you started another character, I mean, granted, if you, it's going to reach a point where your character slots are full and you don't, you can't or you don't want to start any more new characters. But you are going to play more than one character, more than likely on an MMORPG. And when they force you through boring ass tutorials, you really are dissuaded from actually doing new characters. And you stick with the old one, and either the old one loses its pizzazz um, or something, and you just you just don't want to go through a boring ass tutorial that's a half hour long. So the option to do tutorials, I think honestly the best the best options are coming up with a pop that says, "Do you want to do the tutorial?" You know, if you're well, new to the game, you're gonna want to. If it, if if in the future, like um, even if you are on the same account and you want to just do a different characters, it gives you the option. Um, a lot of games will start um, where if it's the first time you've played through them. It's going to give you, it tells you, okay, you need to do this tutorial. The second time you play through it from the beginning, it should give you, most of them give you an option. Do you want to play the tutorial or not? And it's a yes or no. If they do that, continue that way, I think it'll be good. But if they do force tutorials, like I said, it's not going to be, there's a fine line where tutorials need to happen if it's the first time, but you need to have the option. If your account has gone through it already, you shouldn't have to go through it again. My my eyes, Yogi. 
I think the only I'm time really out over there. <laughs> <laughs> I think the only time this should be a forced tutorial is in a team oriented game and when you're just discussing the team mechanics because I understand in those situations you don't want someone to come into a team environment clueless as to what they're supposed to do and then just mm -hmm. mess it up for everyone else because then that makes the the gameplay experience bad for everyone. Um, I think the spirit of tutorials is, is kind of like I want you know we want you to understand the, the core mechanics and some of the best practices, some of the tips and and tricks, so that you could have more fun with this playthrough rather than just going to it blind. But there's so many other ways that a good de game developer or a good game development team could work that into the normal progression of the game. Think about it back in the days. You know, you picked up a Mario game. It didn't tell you, press A to jump. Hold B to run. You know, but it, it forced you into situations where you picked up on those things as you went along. And every other game was like that. Mega Man, yeah. you know, and, and all those. And during that era, there weren't really tutorials because, you know, yeah, they could have probably dealt with, you know, they could have probably stood to hold your hand a little more. But they introduced the mechanics to you in a natural format as part of the normal flow of the game. And you develop and you fine tune your skills naturally, rather than saying, "Here's the, go through this crash course for an hour or three hours, and by the time you're done, you'll be so bored with the game you probably might not even touch it again." That's why when we start Hearthstone, all this time looking forward to playing with it, missed my email for all this time, and then I finally jump into it. Six missions in a tutorial, and I think, "Okay, that was cool." Click, right, let's play something else. Yeah, but you gotta remember too what the 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 Mega Man and the Mario and all that. Those are freaking games that only involve six or a total of like six buttons. That's it. We're yeah, but Mech back Warrior, we're looking at no. Hold on a minute. We're looking at Mech Warrior Online. Your whole fucking keyboard controls that thing, dude. It's not just a couple buttons. That's relative okay? though. That's relative though. But it's the same thing. You're talking about that it needs to be this and this and this, but you got to remember what you're talking about is back in the 80s when you only had a three-button controller or back in the 80s when you only had a one-button controller and a joystick because it was Atari. Yeah, okay. but you're not comparing. You gotta, yeah, but you're not comparing the right way either. Dude, that's we're the evolution right of technology. Now, we're going to do this every week. Me and you are going to argue. That's just <laughs> no, that's but that's the show right there. That's asinine, though, because that's like saying, well, Mom people people that drive an old car don't know how to drive a new car because they didn't go through a tutorial. The, mecha the no, core mechanics just... are still the same. There might be more buttons, but you still know how to freaking turn the wheel and use the pedals. That's the same thing. But it's thing. not the same thing, though. And well, we're is... talking... Okay, guys, 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 guys. And okay, on top so... of that... You're comparing an error that went from a one-button joystick to more buttons. It's all relative. By then, by now, people are not having issues with the mechanics mechanics of the button use. They're having issues with figuring out the game, the mechanics of how to stick the key. <laughs> Screw you, man. You're just not listening to what I'm saying. What we're arguing here is the complexity of the game compared to whether or not we need tutorials. And the thing is, is that, yes, MechWarrior is a lot more complicated than games like Super Mario Brothers. But that being said, Super Mario Brothers had two buttons. Uh, it had, you know, of course, the run fast button, the jump button. And granted, that game probably didn't need a tutorial, really. Um, For its time, it was complex. That's what I'm trying to for, say. For its for its time, it wasn't complex. It was just amazing in the fact that, oh, look at that, we can move and do okay. things. You know, then, it wasn't complex in the controls at all. Um, and, you guys are uh, looking at it compared to today. There were people back then. When you compare Mario to like a Space Invaders, which people were coming off of that, it was complex because now there's suddenly new new concepts to figure out. You know, and you can substitute Mario with any other kind of game. The thing is, the, the, it's relative. We're, we're talking about the Mario where there was only a jump button. There was nothing complex about it. What you could wrap people. your head around it because you're a gamer. You have no, that frame of reference. From a non-gamer standpoint, my wife could play Mario Brothers and understand it easily, and she's not a gamer. Younger and generation. Thing... All right. Back then, people coming into gaming, you guys are not getting this point. 
that's a whole different situation. And there's a bigger barrier back then because gaming was still young. And now you can argue with gaming's been around since the 50s, but that's besides the point. In the consumer market, gaming's been around really since the 70s and 80s. And it, people were st it was still a novelty thing. So when people came into a game, it was always a fresh experience, right? It was always a rediscovery because even though there were some tropes and, regurg and recycled mechanics... All right, whatever. I, I'm the game designer and programmer. I don't know anything about this stuff, pro obviously. Well, I mean, look at it this way. You're saying we don't know what they were like because we weren't there and we are gamers. But the question begs to differ is, were you one of the people back then that just started playing the game? Because at that point, you don't know either. It's only, your, it's only what you can glean from it. And from our point of view... We find it difficult to believe that somebody found, finds it amazing or complicated to hit a jump button. Uh, now, the amazing thing from back then that I could see is, is the fact that, hey, it's, it's a box with a little guy in there that we're able to control with a few buttons. You know, that's the amazing part that they back then would feel from that, not necessarily the complexity of hitting buttons, maybe where to go in the game, you know, because there's a lot of secret places in the first Mario Brothers game. I mean, once you learn of them, you can beat the game in 10 minutes. I learned them, and I did it. Um, but it's not the actual controls themselves weren't complicated at all. <laughs> and Yogi, sure. Ovi's just sitting there. I'm not I'm not saying anything, and I don't know <laughs> if Yogi looking at me is or looking at me make those faces and stuff or just sit there like this the whole time. That's not to make you mad. I'm just sitting there listening listening to you guys because I think it's funny. Um, the relevance from games in the 80s to the rel to the games of now, there there is no relevance whatsoever. There is no comparison whatsoever. the The games back then, if they had if they had were or if they were made to go through tutorials like that, even to use a fucking jump button and shit, I guarantee you Mario 1, I just played it the other day, or a couple weeks ago, Mario 1, the first and the first level within the first 10 feet, it says the jump button is A, and to run faster is B, and then you have your D pad to move around. It does give you a tutorial in Mario 1, just not an extensive one, because there's only three buttons. Okay, now when we get into, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all, Yogi, you know that. Do I like to argue with you? Yes, all the time. <laughs> Do I, am I disagreeing with you? No, I'm not. They, the, the, but the, there is no comparison in what we're even talking about. Okay. I mean, there is, and I know you know what you're talking about, Yang. I know you're, know, you're a designer and you're, you're, you're a guru. I know you are. That's why you're on my team. <laughs> that's why I'm doing this with you, not, you know, some Joe Blow down the street. I know you know your shit. But the, 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 we got to remember what we're talking about and what time frame we're talking about. We're talking a time frame of over almost 35 years. The technology from, from the 1980, I was just born, from 1980 all the way to 2014 has jumped a hundredfold because now I can look at somebody like, like we are on right now, guys. Could we have done this 10 years ago? Maybe really bad quality. Could we have done this 15 years ago? Absolutely not. That's just, I mean, it's just the progression. Obi, I do know what you're saying. So please don't get mad at me. You're looking at on Skype right now. Like you want to reach through the freaking computer and choke soldier out. I know I want to do that daily. Don't do it. It's not worth it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> or is it choke me out? I, I, I'm just, Here, I'm just I don't be, know. You're controlling my mind. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I'm saying is it, the complexity of a game or, or any new content is, is not determined by how many buttons or processes there are. It's by the frame of reference. I mean... A caveman that had to figure out how to roll a wheel, to him that was a complex task. Ooh, okay, get a stick through the hole here. Got to make the hole, and then I roll. roll I can do that. Oh, I made an axle. And to us, that's the no-brainer because we have a frame of reference, and that's the way games games are. Back then, those games, as simple as they are, look at them now. Back then, they were complex because 
that was they were already leaps and bounds ahead of what else everything else it was. In a, so in Mech way, Warrior, yeah. compared to what there is now, Mech Warrior has, and Mech Warrior has always been one of the most complex games. So that's something where you need more tutorial, more, a little more hand holding. So but, that what that illustrates is that the only time there should be some kind of tutorial option, really, and not even force tutorial, is when or maybe for a tutorial there when there's really unique mechanics where there's not enough of a frame of reference to compare it to. But if your game is like Call of Duty, where it's always the same control scheme pretty much by default, then you really shouldn't be going, hey, use the analog, this analog to move and this analog to look. Because if you're doing that, you're treating your audience like they're stupid. And you're also telling them that you do not value their time. That's why I mean like, those little, the little nuances of how your mechanics might be a little different, you could work that into the flow of the game. Because people already have a frame of references. This is a shooter. Um, one, one analog is going to be to, you know, do this. Or one or the keyboard is going to be to move. And then the mouse is going to be to aim. You know, people already have that frame of reference. So right. there's no well, need for all of that. And, and you got to remember, too, it's going to be... It's going to be one, one, one man's opinion versus another man's opinion. You know, a soldier is freaking dead set on PS4. I can't stand PS4. I think it sucks. It's just his opinion versus mine. It's your opinion versus anybody. This is what the show's about. I mean, it's our opinions that we're trying to get, you know, done up. I do understand and I do completely agree with what you're talking about and the and the you know the the time difference and the severity or the complexity of one game versus another it's not that's not what the question was i mean the, the, i think damn near every game that's came out has a tutorial in it to where you can either yes it was about for forced tutorials man we already answered that question we, we all three of us think that they're they're a good thing but it's to the point where every game that you've ever played in your life, I don't give a damn, it's got a tutorial in it. Whether you have to turn it off or whether you have to click on it yourself or you know manually click on the tutorial, it's got one in it. And that's just, and, and maybe it might not be a tutorial as in like a, an actual movie, you know, okay, you're going to do this step, you're going to do this step. It might just be the... I mean, your your control page, your page with your controls on it could be labeled as a tutorial page. Well, that's we're getting. That's a whole new no, no, Yogi. We're not doing it. I'm not getting into that with you tonight. I, didn't, I, I was gonna say the thing. I know you could sit there and blow me up for an hour with that shit. And we all know that. But it's. You know, I'm just saying. All I'm gonna say is, if they're gonna make me sit through a tutorial. That I can't skip through, and I, and and is telling me things that are painfully obvious. If I have to go through it one more time, I'm gonna end up visiting these developers and asking them for a refund. And if they don't give it to me, I will steal it from them directly. I'd be like, motherfucker, I need my time back or my money back, because I did not need to waste my a freaking thirty minutes learning how to hold a controller in my hand. Hi, this is a controller. I mean, li listen. Do you know that, that one of the Sony representatives? Uh, no, it was it, it, Sony did it too. I'm, I'm not gonna touch Sony. I know, I know, soldier like Sony. You, re, re, the um, WWE has a uh, has a uh, freaking uh, 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 their own network coming out, and it's gonna no, be. No, it's out. Yeah, yeah. It's okay, out. it's I out already, it. right? But dude, but their rep, their rep, their rep. Right, it is 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 acting like no one knows what streaming into internet video is, right? Yeah. So he's ex he's explaining, he's like, now it, let's say let's just say let's just say you just missed the latest WrestleMania and cuz you had to go visit family or whatever and you go home and you have some free time finally and you sit down on your computer, well, hey, you could go on and watch the WrestleMania that you missed, or you could watch the one that, from the year before it, and with the click of a button, it's playing. A a anything you, any WrestleMania Sounds you ever like want to watch. Man with me. And I, I'm like, okay. And he's like, hey, and you know what else you could do? You could put, 
you could connect your computer to a bigger screen so you could watch it as if it's on a TV. Or it's like, it's like this is nothing new. It, it, oh, you can want to watch it on your mobile device? Install the app. Yes, we got that too. Like they, they're acting like it's new stuff. Like you have to break it down. If you if you think your artist is that dumb, then what you need to start selling is brains, not tutorials. <laughs> don't don't walk through people through the minutia of the details. The people are not that dumb. Give them a little bit of credit. I mean, Jesus, you think everybody's got downs? I mean, seriously. Well, you'd be surprised what people are actually, what people think about, you know, um, you know, this is the first time everybody's, anybody's ever streamed. You know, it's not like we have thousands of gamers that do it daily and make money, more money than they probably make in a year off of it. You know, it, <clears throat> the, the amount of things that people are um, ignorant about, as in they don't understand or they're just retarded enough to say, oh, they don't think this is good. What are you writing on? I was writing in the chat because uh, uh, Clusterfuck was going, LMAO, lols. <laughs> so I wonder who's laughing at. Maybe my rant. He's probably laughing at me because he's one of my one of my favorite viewers, okay? I'll be sitting here and I'll be playing whatever and he'll be like, hey, Obi, what's up? And I'll be like, what's going on, man? And then I'll just get pissed off about something and I'll just be like, ah, rah, rah, and he's just sitting there watching. Get him, get him, Obi, get him, Obi, get him, Obi. And just, yeah. So. <laughs> Speaking of which, I completely, I'm a completely uh, unrelated note, I, I got a, a, a pentakill with a Kali just before we started the podcast. It's pretty epic. That's why so I shared that. Soldier. Yeah, but I did an ARAM. You, you got everybody coming at me. You got one with her after, because remember we kicked Yogi out the next day, and you got one. No, I didn't. <laughs> anyway, off to. Screw you, Yogi. Oh, uh, class the fuck's laughing at the victory. If you guys want to know the inside joke, I'm gonna tell you. We this were passionate debate. Game, and it wasn't uh, even doing damage. And Soldier was playing, I think Leona. I believe, and uh, no, you were in a collie because he stole your kill. Um, and the soldier was playing a collie mid, and or a collie something. I don't know what he was explaining. No, you're playing Yi. No, he was playing Zin Zhao. Are you? He was playing Zin Zhao, and you were playing a collie. Yeah. And he came off, and he got a quadra kill, and all he needed is one more hit. And Yomar took the last hit. It's like, dude, why won't you just walk away? I wanted to make sure you're going to kill him. Uh! Not doing any damage, Yogi. We looked at the damage counters. You had almost the lowest amount of damage dealt to champions. It was sad and pathetic. You just... Oh, I'm upset. I tanked, I tanked that damage. Sorry to hear that. Hey, you know, Yogi, I've got that whole thing recorded, so I can actually look at the stats that I looked at, and we can oh, see how much boy. damage you actually... Anyway... Oh snap! <laughs> Any music that you guys have heard on, and this is where I'm at, I think. Yeah, damn, damn. Yeah, we're Any in a music shameless that you guys That you guys have heard on this uh, this podcast or on Horseplay um, is uh, from Technoax.com um, or uh, Technoax on YouTube. That's T E K N O A X E. Um, you guys, go check that out. I don't have any free. Uh, I don't have any uh, sounds going off right now. But freesound.org, you get your free sound effects. And remember, guys, always they always have some kind of deals going on. Humblebundle.com. Dot com. And the store, when you buy something from the store, they give ten percent of their proceeds to charity. That is confirmed twice. So. <laughs> Okay, um, and after this show, all all the the horseplay highlights will be available on uh, my page, which this one right here, and Yogi Zilla's channel, both on YouTube and Twitch, guys. Um, we're gonna be starting to put out uh, 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 at least the audio um, of our segments out on YouTube, and more than likely, if I can get it to work, I'm gonna be putting the video out as well. So, hope to see that here. Soldier is also lying. And uh, I did not steal his kill. But that's from Yogi. He just wanted to make sure and get that out there. 
put it in highlighted and bolded notes so I would read it, you know, make sure I would read that one next. So soldier, again, soldierism is lying. So, um, <laughs> but <laughs> you so glad this is my last show. <laughs> we do have some friends that we do keep in contact, guys, in contact with, and that's uh, Gaming History 101, R9 Cast, Knuckleballer Radio, and B Team Podcast on the AllGames.com network and Stitcher. Uh, Knuckleball Radio for January 12th features uh, Yogi Zilla in a game licking and touching. <laughs> That's exactly how it sounds. Okay, that's exactly how it sounds. So you guys make sure, which uh, January 12th was uh, five days ago, but yeah, make sure you guys check that out. Um, <laughs> erase that. <laughs> what? But, uh, but again, guys, make sure that we do have, we are on, um, we do have a Steam network, and we do want to make sure that you guys do get Oh, there it is. Uh, get on there, and it, that is steam.com groups uh, forward slash horseplay. You guys can check that out, and we are on Steam all the time, and that's where we're going to be giving doing some giveaways. Now, giveaways for, he wanted me to make sure that I said this, giveaways for Yogi Zilla. There it is. Is right there. You guys check that out. It's uh, yomar.me and the HTTP yogizilla.wordpress.com. If you guys go to there, he is putting all his giveaways out uh, as well as his uh, twitch.tv forward slash yogizilla. And um, uh, I mean, everything that you guys see on here uh, is.